allowing 68 points per contest. And here we go underway between the Longhorns and the Huskies. Houston Christian averaging 72 points per contest coming in. Texas immediately turns it over. They were trying to feed Caden Shedrick down low. Yeah, you know, in that situation, Shedrick has to hold his man off a little bit more. You get the guards drilling down the corner, which is what you want to see. But at the same time, you don't want to start off the game with the turnover to begin it. Jay Alvarez coming off a career high time 21 points for Houston Christian. Shot clock at five. They lob it down low and a turnover by the Huskies. This is back the other way. Tyrese Hunter. Aceman started off red hot against Marquette and hits his first today. And I like the movement there. Dribble handoff, pass to the big. And you come get a nice little handoff. That's the way, what you want to see right now as far as the movement is involved. Max Aceman was on fire to begin the game against Marquette. Three of three with three three pointers on the other end. The miss down low and a foul. Michael Amaribe. I tell you, the game is so much fun. I enjoy seeing these young guys out here playing, giving different efforts, but it's also an opportunity for me to talk to a lot of them before the games, and I love the receptiveness that they have. I talk to them about the sense of urgency, and you have to think about certain things like what Marquette was going through as far as losing to Wisconsin, losing the prior two games before they played Texas. They have the sense of urgency to play with. It's a great point. Marquette was coming off their worst loss of the year, double digits to Wisconsin, as you said. Brock Cunningham can't get it to fall. So they were fired up for that game. That was their biggest game of the year up to that point. Down low with the bucket is Alvarez, and we're tied early. And some folks talk about the, the loss against UConn. I said to someone earlier, I said, hey, yeah, that's in New York. That's Madison Square Garden. Yes, you're up to play against him, but this is the beauty of why they're playing these games right now. You're not trying to peak right now as Cedric goes up top with the finish, but you want to prepare for your conference, which is a fantastic conference in this country. But you have to go through these moments to learn from them. It's a bunch of new players as well on this team trying to mesh, get that chemistry early on. Alvarez stripped by Aismas, who loses the handle. Houston Christian ball. Texas picked to come in third in the Big 12 this year behind Kansas and Houston. Houston currently undefeated. Kansas, keep in mind, lost to 14 by Marquette. Bounds to Alvarez with the team with 16 points per game coming into this one. Right, Push off. Space, yeah, Marcus Green and the whistle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I've you had got, these moments. You gotta Lowell, say what you see. Lowell, Lowell gets on me. He's like, He's like, you know, you, can, you can't just say that, Bruce. I was like, but look, you can't. right here, that's a push. That man stumbling back like he got hit by Joe Frazier. Wait, I, no one knows who Joe Frazier is. I do. Listening. Only you and I. That's okay. about it. We're the old ones here. First free throw made by Marcus Green, the junior out of Gilroy, California. Oh, out of Gilroy. Okay. Not too far from, not too far from Fresno. It's not an outlet in Gilroy, too. <laughs> Uh, but even on top of that, <laughs> what I'd like to see on, on the defensive side with Texas is active hands. Let's not just guard our guys with our hands in our pockets, as I like to say. Get those hands active as you get, deflected, get deflections. Rodney Terry said he wanted to see great effort early on. We're tied here at four. What do you think so far, Bruce? I don't think the effort has been quite like what, what we would like to see, but it's getting there, and that's what happens sometimes. We start slow at home because we have the confines of being at home, but not understanding that it's important for them to get to a better start. From the corner, Pierce Basil with the miss. Smith's back the other way to Mitchell. And then Mitchell working in the paint. Drops it in. You know, he's one of the few players that remind me of a guy I used to play against at UNLV. Stacy off. Mm -hmm. The way he can get baskets in transition. Stacy averaged about eight points in transition. I see that in Dylan. Dylan's more athletic than Stacy is, and he has a better sense of where he should be at different times. Dylan Mitchell averaging 11 and 9 this year, going in the paint. Alvarez with the miss. But the board by Bonky Marion, the preseason all Southland Conference player. For Texas, every point has come in the paint so far. Aismas, Tyrese Hunter, good look, and drills it. Tyrese, he's going to be all right. I think 
this past game against Marquette told him a lot, or taught him a lot, as far as being at home, understanding. Oh, the big man, Caden Shedrick with the block. Hunter, ball scored over to Ace Miss Shedrick. Why not? Oh, and he hits it. You know, you, you look at Rodney Terry, what he's saying is about this side of the floor, but the more that they understand that defense is where it's at, it's going to create so many opportunities for Texas in transition as well as as well as in secondary opportunities. 6 0 run in the last 25 seconds for Texas. And a foul on Shedrick. How about that possession by Caden Shedrick, the team leader in block style? Ooh, coach, I need, I need about seven attempts. That was just his second made three of the season. Yeah, I've witnessed both. <laughs> They're rarities so far, but he's hitting them when he gets a chance at the free throw line. Michael Maribe. 12 8. Let's see a little, a little, a little, a little press here with Houston. Tyrese Hunter driving Take and dishing all the great pass indeed to Onyema. Now, and this is something that is underrated about Tyrese, his ability to pass the ball. I mean, that's a great attacking of the zone and not looking for his shot only, but watching what the zone does and he's able to give a drop off. Texas again with a hot hand offensively early six of eight from the field. That was blocked twice. That was a couple of long boards there. Kendall Weaver now in the game with the ball for Texas. Drew. A lot of praise from Rodney Terry after the game with Marquette. It's going baseline. Getting the bucket is Dylan Mitchell. Rodney Terry said that they made an edit of all the hustle plays by Kendall Weaver and showed the rest of the team. This is how I want you to play. Mm. You know what that does for the player in itself? I mean, he's being highlighted by the coach to his teammates. And this is his strength. So you know what he's going to do? He's not going to play outside himself as we get the three-point shot by Alvarez. He's not going to try to do something different. He's going to buy even more into that role of wanting to be that guy that coach can always talk about like that. And a season high 10 points as well against Marquette. Hunter. Yema working on the block. A little bit too strong. And this is where I talk about oh, Yema has to go into his move a lot quicker. You know, it's taking a little too much time for him to get that move and get that shot there. Get it down low. And Maribe off the back of the iron with the putback by Maring. And how about this? You got a three point game. Well, it's, it's, you can't say that you know, Houston Christian's just going to lie down. They're here, they, they, they belong here at this moment to have an opportunity but now it's just about Texas showing more of their will and determination and getting better shots Yemma in trouble the paint dropped it off from Weaver who continues with his strong play again Houston Christian 1-6 on the year fight for the bucket down low and that one off the Huskies they have played a BYU team that is now in the top 15 in the country, a TCU team that's receiving votes. Number 12, Texas today. But Coach Kine, when he, when he spoke to us, he said, hey, you know, that BYU team, a lot better than people think. Talking them up, saying how yeah, difficult yeah, it is. was to play there. But whenever you deal with altitude in basketball, it's always going to be a problem. How difficult was that for you, oh, firsthand? You know, we were, we were playing Denver. You know, that first quarter, that first time out, you're looking forward to it. It looked like you've been eating powdered donuts the whole time. <laughs> There's the bucket on the other end by HCU, 18-15. Now, now, again, I think Texas, the athleticism of Texas will show up at some point. But this is where a coach is talking about now. If you handle what they're doing, or being able to bounce back and take care of the rock as you're bouncing back helps out tremendously. And a whistle as there was a scramble momentarily. The officials review this one. Texas led by as many as eight early on. Still waiting for it. 
the shot clock set to shot clock. Yeah. Yeah. As you, you know, you talk about it's a three-point game right now, and, and again, they've gotten some passes in transition, and it really hasn't been glaring to the point where you're saying, oh, my goodness, come on, guys, wake up, wake up. Well, they're, they're a solid basketball team on the other end. We respect that. But it's not about how you necessarily start. It's about how you continue through the game. Ace Smith over to Cunningham. They work it around to Weaver, driving towards the bucket. Physical play. No call back the other way. Texas hustles back. On the fence. The Huskies shooting 36% from the field right now. Brazzle over to Moore. Moore working on Ace Smith. Monkey Mary, nobody in his face, and he makes Texas oh, pay. We got a one point game. He looks at the bench. Okay, big fellow. We look at the bench after you knock down the shot. Last year he led the Southland Conference in field goal percentage. Here's Weaver. Ace miss one bucket so far. Shot clock at seven. Cutting him. Off, working in the paint and losing the handle. It Horton. It sticks with Texas. Timeout on the floor. One point contest between the Horns and the Huskies. Don't sleep on this. I'm not, I'm not mad at the. A little fun there. Bruce Texas is getting out rebounded. They turn it over, so the Longhorns getting out rebounded and second chance points 6 0 in favor of Houston Christian. Yeah, it, see, this is a freshman situation. You know, the ball's being taken out by Chris Johnson, and, you know, he didn't have the clock going on and said, You got 1.9 seconds. It's not a jump shot. We're going to lob at the basket. See, if it's, I was a player now, I'm running back and said, Look at the bench now. Look at the bench now. You shot a shot, made it. Now you want to just run back on defense. Texas on a scoring ground of nearly two and a half minutes. Shedrick working on Merring. And this is bobbled around. Rock Cunningham comes up, comes up with a turnaround jumper. And there's his first of the contest. <laughs> Rock, Rock is just a, he's an Austin favorite. Not a fan favorite, just an Austin favorite. I mean, obviously growing up here, but it's so good to see him have success here and have an impact on this team because of his effort. The tenth start of his career, 122nd game in the long war uniform on the other end. Mary couldn't get it to fall. Texas ball. The Mary has had some good looks down there. Yes, he has. He definitely has. And I just think sometimes. The organic weight of the game of basketball. When you start taunting others because you had success, tends to put a little more pressure on your next shot. And he's missed the last two. Don't poke the bear. That, well, I heard that on the microphone not too long Ace miss with the miss. Back the other way comes HCU. Texas shooting 53% on the day. The Huskies 35%. This green drops it off for three. Glove jumper. Horton hassled him there. Aces circles back. Johnson over to Horton. Halfway down and back out. I see Horton. Second on the team in threes this year with 14. And this is where coach wants him to get better at. It's the defensive side. Just stay in front of your guy. You know, sometimes this is a disservice of when kids are at the high school level or what have you. And Coaches don't hold them accountable on the defensive side. Great hustle by Chris Johnson, and then Texas throws it away. So what do you say now to the Texas fans who are going, wait a minute, it's a three-point game against a 1-6 team. What's missing right now? Well, it's, not, it's nothing that's missing. You just have to understand you don't win the game in the first five minutes or the first ten. It is a full game, but at the same time, you just have to continue to make sure you see great strides in what you're trying to accomplish on the defensive side. Shedrick, green denied by the 6'11 senior. Nine to play in the first half. Texas won for their last seven from the field. Hunter, pass it around to Cunningham, wide open. Can't get it to fall. That one batted out of play. Yeah. Texas ball. And you like IT on the glass. But in that situation, you get another possession instead of trying to score right there. 
And this is where the game, as far as the, the athlete and the coach, the coach wants him to bring it out to get another possession. The player wants to do more to stay on the floor. And his strength, obviously, is on the offensive side. But you can't shortcut these steps that are necessary in this. Let's get enough possession because it helps us in attacking the defense. Gordon backs back out, and that one bobbled by Shedrick. Looked like he wasn't expecting it. Texas now with five turnovers compared to three by the Huskies. Houston Christian on a scoring drop, nearly three and a half minutes more, trying to go baseline. Good help. Give up, give up. Over Texas with numbers all alone, and it's IT Horton. Yep, yeah, you got, you got to. Got to get it done on defense. Great rotation there defensively. And again, this is what Coach Terry is talking about. There it is again. Shedrick, two on one for Texas. And the big man will keep it himself. <laughs> got to Alvarez. You guys got to come help me. You got to come back. You got to come back. With UT turning up the defense of Eva, he's communicating with the senior here. I mean, he was only cleared to play less than a week before the season started. Yeah. yeah. Looking good today as Texas extending their lead a little bit here in the first half on a 6-0 run. Oh, man. You can see, look at Tyrese is sliding his feet. Again, it's about the defense now, and that's what Coach is talking about. The only way you make amends for what transpired. Oh, my. Well, ever since Marion yep. stared at the Texas bench, it it's been a different story. Greg Popovich would say the golf guys are telling him he should not do that. And, and it's just, you know, <laughs> I, I had a team that would be like, hey, man, I'd like you made a shot. You remember the guy that taps it in, like, I did it. I did it. Well, he got some attention from us and from <laughs> Texas as well. The Longhorns now up by seven. Kendall Weaver with Hunter. Texas works it around. There's Johnson. Mitchell Weaver. Good look. Comes up short. It's a good look. It's a good look. You got to take what the defense gives you. Now, obviously, Coach Terry has stressed many a times with Weaver's ability to get downhill, but you also got to shoot the ball when you're open. Now's an open shot, and I'm sure Coach is fine with that. Huskies haven't scored in the last five minutes. Right. In trouble. Oh. Green, that one batted away by Onyema. Texas with numbers back the other way. A little bit too far. Now, now to CJ's, you know, I'm going to take up for the freshman right here. He saw that Dylan was open. And just as he goes to get ready to throw the ball to him, someone recovered. So now he tried to make an adjustment by throwing it ahead to someone else. And this is where you can get this experience in game for CJ. You have to understand that, okay, Slow down, probe when you're bringing the ball up in transition. Probe means survey what's going on. Don't get too fast, don't be too slow, but recognize what it is. Learning moment for the freshman. Each team with six turnovers here in the first half. Six and a half to go in the half. Alvarez gliding to the bucket, but missed. Cutting in, passes up the look. Hunter driving. Batted around, Hunter. Hacked at by Weaver, and the Huskies come up with it. They're going on about a six-minute scoring drought now for Houston Christian. And this is what Coach Kine said earlier. He said, we're having problems scoring, whereas last year, we didn't have these kind of problems. Our three-point shooting is down. Our, our guys that had seen already are no longer here, so now they're looking for other guys that can take up that that responsibility of putting the ball in the basket. They lost a ton of players in the quarter. Had to go the Juco route in the offseason and the bucket by Zarek Onyema. You know, nice jump hook right in the rhythm. He went right into that move. 8 0 run for the Longhorns. Rodney Terry said he's looking for his team to finish off the first half strong. After his, wor his words, they didn't do that in the loss to Marquette. Remember, Marquette went on a 13 0 run to end the first half. That stays with the Huskies. <sighs> Not an agreement? Well, it's an air ball. <laughs> that it was. You know, I, and it's no shot. Plenty, plenty air balls in my time. But I'm just saying, that had no 
If it's not an air ball, did the kid, was he able to get the rebound? I don't think so. That time comes up short. Cunningham bumped into physical play. Texas back the other way. Hunter feeds it to Mitchell. Dylan Mitchell. This one for the highlight reel. Yeah, man, you know, degree of difficulty. Texas starting to open things up on a 10-0 run. Alvarez. And Mitchell with the board. Nearly a seven-minute scoring drop by the Huskies. Hunter denied and a foul. And we always talk about how things are skipped up on defense. And, you know, what leads to defense is, ooh, wrong, wrong, wrong leg there. Huh. Dylan Mitchell, three for three from the field. Six points, four boards for the sophomore out of Tampa. You know, I, I look at the fact that it's 22 points in the paint, and a lot of times when you start slow, people are saying, like, oh, wow, you're shooting a lot of jump shots. That's not the case here. You're still attacking the basket, but it just so happens that the other team happens to be scoring as well on second-chance opportunities. You limit those second-chance opportunities, it's more points in the paint. There's also a lot more opportunities in transition. Hunter at the free throw line. Well, ever since we went to break early on and HCU had the rebounding advantage, Texas has taken over that role. He's talking about points in the paint. Longhorn starting to dominate in every statistical category now as they're on a 10-0 run. Alvarez working in the paint. Texas forcing another miss. Alvarez comes up with it, but Texas ball. You know, I, I know it's, it's unfortunate that Houston is one and six right now, but they're they're competing. Yes. And, and at the end of the day, that's what you want from a team that hasn't had a lot of time together. So I know Coach Kind is, is is stressing how important this time is, but at the same time, he, he has to be happy with where this team is. Ron Cottrell, second longest tenured coach in the nation, been at it for 33 years. And we were talking before, he goes, listen, the game has changed, the recruiting game. He goes, now I'm going the JUCO route after losing a ton of players in the portal, but still adapting. He said something that was very interesting. He said, you know, it's hard for you to bring in a high school kid because you know that kid is only being coached up by you to leave. Yes. I mean, that's like going to... He kept going to the prom with the prettiest girl, and next thing you know, she's danced with others during the prom. Make me feel like <laughs> it sounds very safe. He said, yeah, listen, it's almost, you know, now they're using us as developmental programs, so we have to go a different way, Max Aismas. I talk about the touch, and he's he's been a scorer since he was at Jets with a Dallas, playing high-level basketball. This is no big thing for him to see somebody closing in that has athleticism that can jump. He's like, well, go get this young fella. The most impressive thing Rodney Terry's going to look at is the scoreless drought. His defense has forced up more than eight minutes, and that forces a timeout. 3.40 to go in the half. Texas up by 13. Nice little clip of it, but it's the activity on the defensive side that's been impressive thus far. 12-0 Texas run. Shedrick with seven points. Mitchell with six to lead the way. Cunningham looked like he was going to connect, but unable to. 3.20 to go in the half. Maring, the leading scorer for the Huskies, with six. It hasn't done much since he made eye contact with the Texas bench. <laughs> Alvarez. Another miss from outside, scoring ground, approaching nine minutes now for the Huskies. And although it's a miss for ACU, you know, at least there was execution of the play. You got a wide open shot. That's all you can ask in those scenarios. 12-0 Texas run. The last eight minutes driving into the paint. That one deflected high, and Hunter comes down with it and fouled. Obviously, has to be some frustration there for Christian. They can't buy a button. No, you can't, but you got you got to keep on keeping on. But again, a lot of that has to do with the activity of what Texas is doing right now. Yeah, it's a 17 point that they've given up, but those are a tough 17 that ACU has had a chance to get at.
So is this the type of bounce back performance Rodney Terry wanted to see up to this point? I, I believe so. You, you have to give credit where credit is due. Each time that, that ball gets near the paint, you see more white jerseys around the ball handler than anything else. You have not seen a wide open shot because of a breakdown in Texas defense. Texas outscoring the Huskies in the paint, 24 to 8. Hunter, pump fake. Asmus. Hunter barrels into a defender. Kicks it out wide to Mitchell. Baseline, spinning. Asmus hits it. Great relocation of Max finding an open spot in the zone. I'm preaching all the time with kids. Drive the zone, but you have to have movement as well as the guy that's driving the basketball. You can't just stand still. It's because Dylan was able to drive the zone and Max would place an open spot. He gets a wide open shot. Ace missed time to the team lead with seven boards. Longhorns on a 15-0 run. No travel. Uh -oh. Step out of bounds. Still without a point, their last 10 plus minutes. You know, I talk about like ball movement, body movement. Here it is, a rip baseline against the zone. The zone reacts, and look who relocates the best three point shooter on the team. Oh my goodness, come on, fellas, remember the scout report. And over his last three games, he's averaging right around 25 points per contest. A miss from the corner. Probing the defense and lost the handle. Hunter back the other way. Three on two. Runs it up and thrown it down is Mitchell. You know, in transition, that, that's where it's at. I tell you, he's so dynamic. You know, you get a steal out here. Next thing you know, it's a highlight. It's kind of a quiet Saturday here, but plays like that brings the crowd alive, gets the energy going. Mitchell with the board, 17-0 Texas run. A. Smith somehow maintains possession and gets it to fall. Texas running away with it. You know, Max's pace, I talked about, you know, is it, we're talking about a senior and Chris Johnson is a freshman. Max's pace right there was all about figuring out how to get the points. Here we go again, Shedrick. And then you have the big man, Eurostep. Everybody trying to get involved here, but they turn it over with just over 35 seconds to go. Co Coach Self says, just, just go dunk the ball. <laughs> just throw it down. Just, just go dunk the ball. <laughs> you can see it there. 19-0 <laughs> Texas run. How about that for finishing a half strong? Like Rodney Terry requested from his team. Shot clock is off. Huskies over for their last 14 from the field. How many minutes has it been since they scored? 11 and a half. That's, that's, that's. Aismas from way downtown off the back of the iron. Coming up with it is Horton. That'll do it for the first half. Texas takes a 20-point lead into the break, finishing off on a 19 to nothing run. Aismas with the team I nine points. Shit. All time. And the second half is underway here between the Horns and the Huskies. And then the Huskies looking for their first point in 12 in-game minutes. Aismas defending Green. Bearing shot clock well under 10 now. Driving with the bucket is Alvarez and rejected by Shedrick. He just he can't teach the length in this game. Here it is. He thought he had a shot. He got by him a little bit. He didn't realize that Shedrick's arms are long. He moves so well for a big man. He does. He's, he's, he's good. He's Can't believe it got called for the foul. Uh, it, it didn't give him space to come down. So I, I, I don't. I wonder—is it kind of like in, in football? You know, as when we talk about you know space, you kind of be able to land the, the offensive player. But I, it's not necessarily that he came down in the space. But yeah. you know, he blocked the shot. So in football, if the if the ball is deflected.
Now there's no pass yes. interference. Yes. I, I think I think we need to come up with that rule in basketball. I think you need to push for that. I know Shedrick would agree with you. He couldn't believe it there. Doesn't come back to hurt Texas, says HCU. What can you say? I mean, they just can't buy a point right now. But I mean, that's what you can't say. <laughs> Ron Cottrell in his 33 years has seen his team start off the season like this, but again, the record a bit deceiving at one and six, playing a the toughest schedule in the nation. There you go, they finally get their first field goal, more than 12 minutes, courtesy of Pierce Basil. And in that situation, coach is thinking, like, how would we get that turnover right there? We got to see what side is the player playing defense. And nice a high side. There he is, the foul, Shedrick. <laughs> So for Texas, again, the storyline was coming into this. They were coming off their second loss of the year, both to top 10 teams. From their fourth all-time meeting against Houston Christian, this one was close for about the first half of half number one. And then the Longhorns pulled away. First half of half of, yeah, okay. Um, first half of the first half? Uh -huh. Are we going with that? No? <laughs> Is that a stretch? I, I think we should go like, we should use minutes in that situation. <laughs> Dave Shedrick. My ADD stuff starts to kick in. Mine too, especially with the music blasting <laughs> here. Texas back up by 20. They're 19 to go. The 12th ranked Longhorn 6 and 2, overall 5 and 0 at one. Dazzle driving, pull up jumper. That one went off HCU. So for Texas, hoping to get Dylan DeSue back sometime soon. His rehab on schedule, on target. And, and that's what you want to be careful in that and understand that we need him for the long haul. It's not about right now. And, and sometimes you're tempted when you see a, a guy progressing in his rehab. But I, I tell you this, I, I love his spirit, even when he's not there, he's still engaged on the bench. He's talking to guys, he's chatting with them. And that allows him to feel involved as well. And important for this Texas team. Learning how to play without him, learning how to win without him in case that's necessary. Shedrick goes to the floor hard. A little bit slow to get back up. And he is back up on his feet, back the other way. Mitchell getting a hand on it. Going glass, getting the bucket is Michael. He scared me when he fell that time. Remember, he's coming off exactly. double shoulder surgery in the offseason. Hunter. Hunter to go. You know, it's funny. You know, coaches talk to Tyrese about that play right there. Hey, don't give up on that little two dribble pull up. He's just there for him. Tyrese Hunter with five points. Shedrick and Aismas leading the way with nine apiece. Cutting in. In front of Baring. Basil. Shot clock under 10 yet again. Alvarez in no hurry. Makes his move to his left. Back to his right. Loses the handle. Baring fires it up. Nearly got it to go. Battle for it. Offensive rebound by the Huskies. And Alvarez gets the bucket. And again. That's one of those situations. It's just unfortunate. The ball bounced a certain way off that, off of the three-point attempt. Bruce, the offensive rebounds on the day are in favor of Houston Christian, eight to six. I mean, it, it happens, and you know it's more important about you playing through that stuff and, and making sure you can try to secure it. That one there was a little different because of the bounce of the ball. It, it's, it off the back rim and bada bada bop came into Alvarez's hands and he was able to get the layup there. 17 to go in this match between the Horns and the Huskies. Ace missed four of seven from the field. Cunningham feeding it down low to Onyema. Texas shooting 47% on the day. 3 of 11 from downtown. Under to inbound. Pull up jumper by Aismas. Misses. There is Dylan Mitchell. Picking up the boards with Fitz Hunter flying in. 
Back the other way come the Huskies. Dylan Mitchell, eight points and eight rebounds in 19 minutes. Driving in was Imaribe. And this is one of those situations during the course of the game. It's not that Texas is not playing hard right now. It's just the, the fall of the ball, so to speak. Sometimes it goes your way on offense, and sometimes it doesn't on defense. And you just have to continue to stay the course. And, and I think that's what they're doing a, a really good job of right now is staying the course, making sure you limit them to one shot each time down on certain offensive possessions. They did there. Alvarez with the miss. From beyond the arc, Hunter bumps in the paint, comes up short, bearing, finally collects. Green trying to fly past Mitchell. The shot was altered and out of bounds off the Huskies. Texas hustling back on defense. IT Horton coming back in the game for the Horns. A couple of points, one of six from the field. We talk about having energy. That, that's the thing right now. IT have green energy right now. Not just on the offensive side, but defensive as well. But how tough is it when you're up by 20, coming out in the second half, to come with that energy? This is where, you know, again, we talk about these things. That's part of you being a, a dynamic player here. Being a dynamic player here is not just on the basketball court, but it's when you're watching games, you have to see that you have to be focused. And if you're focused, good things will definitely happen, and we'll be talking about 19-0 run. So far in their second half, outscored by two. The Huskies, Aismas, down low to Yema. And one! And we talk about Yema, the fact that he has a chance to play. And, and, and what I mean by that is, Coach Terry says earlier in the year, he told Bruce, he got a chance to play. We got two guys that are injured. And in order for him to gain those types of minutes, it's these things right here. You get the ball, go right into a jump hook. He didn't dribble. He didn't hold the ball. That's what's necessary. And look, 32 points in the paint. It's hard to complain about that from the coaching perspective. 32 to 14 advantage in the paint. Texas up 44 23. It's a little, a little press here, a little press to kind of, I think, get the guys active. Instead of waiting on your guy to cross half court and then you defend. Get guys a little more active now. It's a good thing. And Maribe from downtown, though, with the rebound by Baring underneath. They retain possession. The offensive rebounds now 10-7 in favor of the Huskies. The coach talked about the fact that he he, he doesn't have the three-point shooters he's had in the past, and it shows today. You know, I think you just can't teach a guy to shoot a hundred shots, and he'll be a much better or a much more efficient shooter. It, it's a talent, and and not everyone has it. I know the NBA has has really just ruined a lot of folks. Or I should say, not the NBA. Golden State has, but. You got to work at this, and you have to have that craft as a shooter. The Huskies one for eight from downtown today. Aismas scoping out the defense. Tyrese Hunter driving baseline, kicks it to a wide open Mitchell. No. Texas hustling for it. Aismas comes up with it. Horton passing it around. Tyrese Hunter thought about it. Shot clock at two, fires one up, grazes the iron. I.T. Horton with the miss. Basil the other way. You just got to get that back out for another possession as they score in transition. Here's just Basil. Get, get it back in, 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 and let's run our sets again. It's, it's okay to do that. Texas, this one is, of their last seven from the field. And I'm sorry, but this is where I think sometimes pressing happens with players. You know, it's like, hey, we're up. Let me let me shoot this shot. Like, you know, it's, it's one thing starring in your role of doing certain things. It's another thing when you're up 20 plus points and being able to star in that role as well. That's where you truly earn the respect of the coach and earn more minutes on the floor. Huskies outscoring Longhorns 8 7 here in half number two. Green driving for right in front of them and one. Marcus Green. The Huskies have certainly come out of the half with energy. 
You know, one of the things that a lot of coaches teach in this game right now is no middle penetration. As you see, you have a chance to keep that individual from going middle, and you have to do your part. IT it is the struggle for IT right now is understanding it's not his offense that's going to keep him on the floor. It's the defense, and I think he's pressing a little bit on the offensive side because there's been at least three plays today where you think he can get it out, we reset the offense, and he tries to score real quick against Lee. Rodney Terry goes to the bench, brings in Weaver, instant energy, along with Shedrick. Feed it to the big man, double team. Shedrick trying to hold on. Jump ball. Possession arrow, Texas. Texas won for their last eight. On a scoring drought now, two plus minutes. Mitchell up to nine rebounds to go with his eight points. There he is. Aceves with ten on the shot clock. Castle in front of him. Feeds it to Shedrick. Four on the shot clock. Shedrick. Smooth. He just, he just, that should be a lesson to every man at 6'9 in the country. Use both your hands on jump hooks because it comes in handy. Way to get after it. Hunter going to the floor. Fired up. Now Texas feeling it in the second half. <laughs> oh, I love it. That brought the Texas it. bench off their feet. Yeah, well. You know, hey, sometimes you need a moment like this. Look at here. He knows he didn't. Talking to him earlier today, he knows he didn't play his best at home against Marquette. But he understands that he can make up for that right now in each and every time he plays us. What is the biggest thing he needs to work on? It's being solid where you become a more consistent player. You know, I know I, I, I was going to leave it at being solid, but consistency. Each and every night, each and every game, you are bringing that same mental fortitude which allows you to have the success that you have in a lot of these blowout victories. Hunter with five points today. Shedrick looking for Hunter. Nice. Works it around Ace Miss. Nice pump fake by Ace Miss. And buries it. Great ball movement. Love the shot fake. I mean, some kids will try to shoot over the guy that's contesting the shot. But I think that's is the experience of Max and what he's been able to do in his college career. That's cool. He's so quick and deliberate with his moves. Texas forcing the turnover. Hunter driving baseline and gets the call. And I, I talk about consistency. And we'll talk about that more after the break. That, that we will. <laughs> and I look forward to it because this is such a great place to be. Just a little, someone else getting on the floor for a loose ball tends to what, work wonders. You saw the bench up? You saw mm -hmm. the guys behind the bench up? The fans Jeez. got up. The fans got That's up. That's it. Balloons were waving in the air. Well, you were jamming out to the music during the commercial. I, I didn't know was. you were a Killers fan. Uh, oh, man. I, I am now. I, <laughs> oh. Tyrese Hunter misses both. That's Five a great points. teammate right there, ladies and gentlemen. He, he knew I didn't know who sang that song. But he threw it out there as if I did. Moving on. <laughs> 19 points. Texas in front at a whistle. A foul on Mitchell right there. So for Texas, you have LSU coming up after this with a familiar face, Will Baker, former Longhorn Westlake product. And then Texas finishes out the non-conference schedule with some pretty good matchups. But this looks to be a nice bounce-back performance so far. It, it does, and you know, I, I'll say this. Uh, ACU has done a fantastic job today from the standpoint of what they've been doing against other teams and coming in bright-eyed and, and bush-tailed and not understanding what goes on at this level. They've really done a good job. But now again, just as Coach said before when we spoke to him, they're not shooting the ball well. So when you have those types of situations, ultimately it affects you and impacts you because you need to score the basketball no matter what. Texas shooting 44% on the day. Ace with a team high 12 points. Shedrick with 11. And again, spinning around. Chris Johnson, the freshman. Love 
that for the freshman because it does so much for him. You know, good athlete, but really learning on the job right now, seeing how fast the game is. Foul on the other end on Texas. I mean, you look at the space, and there's no hesitation in this shot, and, and that's what you want to see from a freshman, a senior, a sophomore. Guys understanding where your shot is and not making it too difficult by overthinking the situation. Texas with five threes today. They average about seven per contest. Longhorns starting to heat up from the field. Three of their last three. But again, that run at the end of the first half. But HCU. Behind the whole peak time now, down 52 32 with just over 11 to play. Texas is going to go 22 and one all time here. And at this point this season, again, I mean, Rodney Terry was talking to us about it. You're just trying to get these guys to mesh early, some new faces, trying to learn how to come back from adversity, a double digit loss to Marquette and bounce back. Yeah, and. Again, it's each and every time you're on the floor is that opportunity to work on those little things like that It's not necessarily one or two things But it's a lot of things when it comes to the game of basketball that you constantly pursue the perfection of As we get a score down low Amari Bay with the bucket Texas came in averaging right around 79 points per contest 54 with just over 10 to go in the game. Johnson, Aismith shot clock at six. Aismith to his right, makes his move, pull up jumper. Yes. You know, I spoke of that word patience earlier about getting to spots. You know, people wonder how Chris Paul is still able to be effective at year 15. Well, it's being able to pick spots before you know where you want to get to, whereas when he was younger, he exerted a lot of energy as Brock. <laughs> there he <it> goes. <laughs> you're going to need a band-aid for his elbow soon. Yeah. But it's a good point picking and choosing when to be aggressive there. Shot clock going down. He knows when the clock is. He has his clock as well. And it's just, it's basically understanding where he wants to be way before the buzzer goes off on the shot clock. Being smarter and wiser with your energy. Less than 10 to go here between the Longhorns and the Huskies. Alvarez falling over in the paint. Shot clock at two. Green fires it up and hits it. And sometimes some of the easiest shots are when it's at the shot clock going down. And you, you don't have to worry about, oh, is it too fast? Enough? No, just shoot it. No time to think. The Huskies, two of nine from behind the arc. Texas, five of 15. Cutting in with this. But Johnson swooping in to save it. Aismith. Aismith can't get it to fall. On the other end, Texas not getting back on D in time. Porter Basil. Well, here in the second half, HCU is still outscoring Texas 22-19. We'll take a timeout, less than nine to play. The Longhorns still up 50. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I would have loved to have been a student here or another athlete here just to go support the other athletes. A lot of success. Again, you have a volleyball team deep in the postseason. Texas women's basketball ranked top five in the nation. And out of the timeout, there is Max Aismas. Just knows how to score in, in, at all levels. Three point layups, mid range, elbow. Oh my. You and I were talking about it during the break. You're seeing at times flashes of energy from Texas and then lapses in energy, which brought Rodney Terry to call the timeout. Yeah, and, 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 and that's the thing right now is you're not battling can we score, it's can we be consistent? Can we get to the point where when we don't get a good shot at the basket, that bothers us more than anything else? Cunningham fighting for it. 
Ace miss, passed up a wide open look, unselfish play. Hunter with the miss. And, and you know what? And it's to get someone else going. I get it. And, and Rodney's not upset at that one. Yeah. Maybe he's upset at the first shot because it was rushed or what have you. But when you get your your best three point shooter looking for someone else to get them going, that's a great teammate. That's being selfless out there on the floor. Because he knows Ace Smith can hit that if need be. That's not the question. It's a little bit slow to get up. Hops back up to his feet. Quick timeout here in Austin. 14 for the Huskies, just two for the Longhorns. And, and, and it stems from those moments where, you know, we highlighted, you get a rebound and try to put it back against the link instead of getting another possession in that scenario because we have good players that can get that as Shedrick gets down there for a nice little layup there. But you have to be cynical in your thought process of we got to get another good possession here. We wear teams down when we get back to our offensive set. What we don't do if we miss, we it leads to an offensive opportunity for the opponents. I need Terry all week. Hammered home the thought process of finishing off half strong. They ended the first half on a 19 0 run. Here's a battle underneath the bucket, and Texas comes up with it. Horton. Mitchell driving, and he had the blocker in front of him. Shedrick clearing the way. That's right. That's, that's a good seal there. A seal without a bad defensive play or offensive. Uh, Foul call. He just let him. He held his position. Dylan did the rest. Dylan Mitchell, one rebound away from his fifth double double of the season. I think he just got it. There you go. Speak of the devil, Mitchell, on the other end, drawing the foul. Now the next phase in Dylan's game is seeing that shooter in the corner. It's called baseline drive, baseline drift, and you had best three point shooter in the corner, but he's so focused on getting to the rim. That's what happens sometimes, but this is again, this is where he learns being out there on the floor. When does that come? He's a sophomore now. When do you expect to see that? Well, I, even now, because you have drills right now that you work on, you know, e even in this recognizing no one's stopping me, I got my left hand, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that. But right here, eyes up, looking for that drift guy because you have three blue shirts around you, that means someone's open. I tell young players today, I said, hey, if you get by one guy, you got to see where that next rotation is coming from. And once guys start understanding that aspect of the game, eyes up, looking where the help is coming from, they become better and more efficient. Dylan Mitchell now up to 11 and 10 on the day. Six to play in this one between the Longhorns and the Huskies. Driving into the paint, missing another rebound for Mitchell. Hunter. Nice pass to a wide open Kendall Weaver. And you know, we can say, oh, that was a quick shot in transition. Weaver has earned that with his play on the floor as far as his effort. That's him growing in the game. Rodney Terry is called Weaver and Brock Cunningham, the hardest working players on the team. Shot clock below 10. From the quarter, that one delivered by Marcus Green. Texas starting to heat up offensively as we hit the five-minute mark. Three for three from the field. Horton with a miss, back the other way. Three on two. Dazzle leading the charge and drops it in. this for the Huskies. They have fought hard in the second half. The score in this half has been 29 apiece. Shedrick. Uh -oh. Mitchell flying in and again draws the foul. That, that uh-oh was more. And wasn't that a, a, a spilled anything, ladies and gentlemen? I saw, I saw a dunk bait coming. <laughs> it was on its way. Is it? Watch your head. Texas from the free throw line. Four of nine today. To have a coach and you say, hey, young man, you get in the game, you want to get your name in the paper? Skull. Like, okay. That was not Coach Pop, I take uh, it. No, Pop, Pop can't stand the papers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've noticed his disdain for the media. 
from a distance. But he's a swell guy. He just, you know, just don't understand him. Of course. <laughs> Hates the media. I get it. Used to it. That one turned over. Texas. Hate, hate is a strong word. Yes. Well, that is a strong I word. know he doesn't. I, I got to take up for Gregory. Now I might get some for that. Look here, Bowen. Don't you sit up there and start calling me Yeah, Gregory. you're one of us now. No, no, no. No, no, no. Look. No? <laughs> No, we're, we're all in this together. <laughs> Tyrese Hunter trying to find some room, weaving his way ah. through the defense, and one. It, it, you know, I tell you, Tyrese is so strong inside, and he understands how to use his body. And when he gets in there, he doesn't just look for contact to, to draw a foul. It's all in the method of scoring an and one. That's what made, made him such a tough covering. High school, his freshman year, player of the year at Iowa State. The kid can play, and not just one side of the ball, both sides. Averaging 11 points per game, and he's got eight points and five assists today. Getting closer and closer to 900 career points for Tyree Sunder. Four to play in Austin, driving to the rack is green, and just ran out of real estate. Swallowing up. You know, I, I got to say this, though. The defensive rotations have been spot on. There's moments in this game that you could you could easily, okay, he missed the rotation. But the effort on that side, it, it is about what has transpired in the past as far as Marquette is concerned, that you see this effort on the defensive side. Look at that. Green kind of, with Weaver right in his face. Hey, that's great offense, but even better defense where the offense just had to be made the shot. 71-48. Texas is going to move to 7-2 on the young season. IT Horton drops it off for Mitchell in the corner. Weaver bounced around and out. Texas with six threes overall on the day. Six for 29. The Basel brothers out on the court. There's the pass down low for Emma Rive. Leaders for Texas today, Aismas with 16, Shedrick with 15, Mitchell with 13. Hunter driving, pump fake, soft touch. Again, you know, I, I can't say enough about Tyrese's ability to score the basketball, but I love this game in particular. You're talking about a young man who went home and didn't play well in front of about 40 family and friends. And and more than anything else, he owned it. He's, you know, I got to be better. And that's the making of a great basketball player. Mitchell lobs it up top. On Yema. Comes down with it. Texas trying to get back on D. Force the air ball. And the crowd lets them know about it. Hey, that, I'm sure Mason wish he had that one back. <laughs> Just over two to play in Austin, Texas. In control, needless to say. Up by 25. There's Weaver. Hunter streaking into the paint. And Tyrese Hunter taking over late. He's got 12. Tyrese Hunter now 24 points away from 900 for his career. The final 90 seconds coming up. Texas has shot nearly 50% from the field today. Yeah, keep the ball moving. You're going to get what you want as long as the ball moves. With this, Husky shooting 32%. Defensive end. Wow. Hunter lost the handle and turns it over. Final minute of play. Green one on three, swatted away by IT Horton. And the crowd is starting to rise to their feet as Texas will move to 22 and one in this building. 
That was a lot of good stuff tonight. When the coaches look at the film, they're going to see a lot of good stuff. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about how you come back after adverse situations. That loss in Marquette, obviously, they wish they had that back. At the same time, they came out with a very good effort today. You look at holding them for 12 minutes at one point on defense. That's fine. You know, this is all a growing property for the Longhorns. Oh, okay. What you see? I was wondering what was going to happen. Like, our coach is shaking his head. Like, no, no, no. If they're ready to call it a game as the final seconds wind down. So Texas will take down Houston Christian 77 to 50 as the Longhorns improve to 7 and 2. And listen, while was it perfect at times, a 27 point victory is absolutely nothing to scoff at. You know, a game where you wanted to see Texas come out.